This is the fourth in a series of videos covering the basics of motherboards and computers, seeking to inform and guide those who are new to the building and modifying of computers. In the last three videos, we have looked around a motherboard, talked about adding memory to your computer, and considered the different types of power supplies. Today we are going to be looking at storage. Every computer needs a way to store data and applications. There is a small amount of data storage on the motherboard in the form of read-only memory. This, sometimes referred to as the BIOS or UFI, is to allow it to perform a basic startup of the computer. However, in order to allow the computer to perform more complex tasks and interact with you, the user, a much larger storage system is needed. This will hold both an operating system and your applications and data. There are a number of ways the motherboard can communicate with these storage systems. Firstly, let's look at eMMC storage. eMMC is Embedded Multimedia Card, which is the standard for embedded flash memory and contains both flash memory and a flash memory controller. Not all motherboards support this, but it is common with motherboards which are used as embedded devices. These are small computers integrated into larger systems and execute specific tasks. An example of eMMC storage is the eMMC module for the Odroid computer which fits snugly onto the motherboard. This can be purchased in sizes ranging from 8 to 256 gigabytes. The latest eMMC storage modules can transfer data at a rate of 400 megabytes per second. The next step up is to use a SATA port on the motherboard to communicate with a solid state drive or hard disk drive. The latest SATA ports can transfer data at a rate of 600 megabytes per second. The majority of motherboards will have multiple SATA ports, allowing you to have multiple disks attached to your computer. Devices connected to these SATA ports come in two forms. Firstly, solid state drives. These have no moving parts and are basically memory boards that will retain the data they hold even after power has been removed. SSDs are much faster than hard disk drives, but at the moment are more expensive, although prices are still dropping. Both SSDs and hard disk drives need both a data and power connection cable. Generally, the data connection comes from your motherboard and the power directly from your power supply. However, there are some smaller motherboards which also supply power for the drives. Hard disk drives. These have a spinning disk with several platters and multiple read heads. As such, they are much slower than solid state drives. However, on a cost per gigabyte, hard disk drives are currently cheaper. Hard disk drives come in a range of formats. The smaller 2.5 inch drives originally fitted in laptops and the larger 3.5 inch drives intended for desktop systems. The warranty of hard disk drives tends to range from 3 to 5 years, depending on the manufacturer. However, they can last much longer. As they do have moving parts, a great deal depends on how much they are used. So the choice for fitting a new storage solution to your computer comes down to the question of speed. If you need the drive to be fast, perhaps to hold your operating system, then going for an SSD, a solid state drive, is a good move, as you will see a marked improvement in performance as compared to a hard disk drive. If you are adding a second or third drive to hold data, like photos, films, documents and backups, then a larger hard disk drive would fit better. 
It has also been said that hard disk drives are better for long-term archival storage. Hard disk drives can be purchased in large capacities like 20 terabytes or more. Industry development continues to push the sizes of these drives to even higher capacities. Another option to connect your solid state drives is via a connector directly mounted on the motherboard. Many modern motherboards now come with these as standard. Some even have multiple slots. These M2 connectors come in two varieties. SATA M2, which can theoretically transfer data at 6 gigabytes per second. NVMe, that's Non-Volatile Memory Express, which can theoretically transfer data at 20 gigabytes per second. Fitting either of these to the motherboard does give the advantage of needing no data or power connection cables, making the layout of your computer tidier. The increased speed does give a marked improvement to performance over SATA drives. While an NVMe drive is fast, it's still slow in comparison with the main memory of your computer. So it's important to have sufficient memory in your system as well as free disk space. So if you're looking to build your first computer and equip it with storage, or are looking to expand your existing storage, hopefully this video will have been of assistance to you. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching.